The Justice Department has launched a preliminary review into a handful of classified documents discovered at a think tank in Washington from President Biden's time as vice president. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze reports Republicans and former President Trump quickly denounced Biden for the new discovery. The Justice Department launching a preliminary investigation into the possible mishandling of classified files from President Biden's time as vice president in the Obama administration. Sources tell ABC News a small number of classified documents were discovered one day before the midterm elections last November in an office at the Biden Penn Center think tank in Washington, D.C. Biden occasionally used that workspace from 2017 until the start of his 2020 campaign. Was this a case of sloppy record handling or something um, more intentional? The White House saying in a statement it's cooperating with the National Archives and Justice Department, adding the documents were discovered by Biden's personal attorneys as they were cleaning out a locked office space. <laughs> Last night, the president not answering reporters' questions, as Republicans are quickly drawing parallels to former President Trump's mishandling of hundreds of classified documents that authorities say he brought to his Mar-a-Lago estate. It's how ironic. I know Joe Biden was quick to criticize President Trump for mistakenly taking some documents that were apparently classified. But the White House says Biden's lawyers immediately notified the National Archives and the files were turned over within a day the archives unaware they were missing. That's a contrast to Trump, who was involved in a long-running legal battle with the archives, where he allegedly resisted an FBI subpoena for the return of classified documents, which prompted the court-approved raid. Authorities also claim they found evidence Trump tried to obstruct their investigation. A source tells ABC News that Attorney General Merrick Garland has assigned a U.S. attorney from the Northern District of Illinois appointed by former President Trump to oversee the review of these documents discovered at the Biden think tank. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. The Department of Education is proposing lower student loan payments for millions of people. It's part of the Biden administration's plan to change the existing income-driven repayment program. The proposed rule could reduce payments to 40 cents per dollar, saving borrowers some $1,000 per year. It would also pause payments for anyone making less than $30,600 a year. In addition, there would be no longer a charge for unpaid monthly interest, and smaller loans would be forgiven after 10 years of payment. The final rule could be released later this year. If you have kids in college, you know how important scholarships are. Educational debt is the fastest growing debt a category in America. The average borrower owes almost $38,000 in student loans. Nancy Alvarez has some hidden scholarships to look out for. I have a full ride to UCF through Bright Futures. I had a football scholarship. Uh, I got my tuition paid for two or three times over. Recent surveys show $49 billion is awarded in scholarships annually, but an estimated $100 million in scholarship money still goes unawarded each year, mostly due to a lack of applicants. There are tons of scholarships throughout your local community. If you are involved in a church, a mosque, a synagogue, the, your local fire department, even the post office offers scholarship opportunities for students. Most cities have a local rotary that awards 7.5 million in scholarships each year. Contact your college's financial aid website. The website has tons of information. Some even have scholarship platforms. Also, start researching online. One website that lists more obscure scholarships and the dates the applications are due is College Life Made Easy. You can find one just about for everyone, like a pet lover scholarship worth $1,000. All you need to do is send in a photo and caption of your pet. The Pella Post Overcoming Adversity Scholarship is worth two grand and is open to children who have incarcerated parents. And there's up to 25,000 up for grabs in the Live Mas scholarship. All you have to do is submit a two-minute video on what you're passionate about and how you plan to change the world. Most importantly, get into a routine of hunting for scholarships. You need to incorporate searching and applying for scholarships and make it a routine habit. And the reason being, it is competitive. I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. How about some more good news? Gas prices likely will dip. That's what a spokesperson for AAA says. The organization says the prices went up during the holidays. They have now flattened. And over the weekend, gas prices fell more than one cent, bringing the national average to $3.28. The reason for the decrease? 
lower demand. According to data from the Energy Information Administration, demand for gas dropped last week after the new year. More than a third of U.S. households cook with a gas stove, but the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission is reportedly considering a ban on them. Bloomberg reports the federal agency is concerned about indoor pollution linked to gas stoves and says the stove's usage is associated with an increased risk of current asthma among children. The Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers say a ban on gas stoves would not address the overall issue. They say improving ventilation is a better solution. The CP SC is also considering other options like setting standards on gas stove emissions. Outside with live game, hey, might not be a bad time to be cooking out as nice as it is outside. Simply perfect. Fire up the grill. Huh? Perfect, perfect weather. <laughs> it's getting to that lunchtime, David Sears. Seems like we always somehow get back to this subject, right? <laughs> when we're talking about uh, the weather. We combine food and weather, two of our favorite subjects. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to show you a picture of the sun, and, and there's a reason we're showing you this. There was a big solar flare yesterday, so energy uh, was pushed off from the sun. It actually caused a radio blackout down in parts of South America. This picture from, is from Skywatcher, and what he's showing us here are the dark spots on the sun today, and they're more numerous than yesterday. So we know the sun's kind of acting up a little bit, these solar flares. We'll see what kind of effects that has here on Earth. Sometimes they can, not huge effects, but radio blackouts and such. So we're keeping an eye on that, but pretty interesting to see that. That's a great shot by Skywatcher as always. Let's now come back down to Earth and look what we have going on here. So some clouds, some fog this morning. This is the last of it to burn off, and we're seeing that between Pleasanton and Gonzales. Uh, but this is quickly shrinking, and everyone's going to see sunny skies today. Should be a beautiful day. Already is. 72 degrees at the airport, 65 in Kennedy, and that's because they were within that cloud cover. But even there, we'll start to see the temperatures Warming up some 76 in Kerrville, one of the hot spots. Unusual to see Kerrville is one of the uh, warmest spots on the map, but that's where we are today. 75 Castroville, 73 up there in Bolverde. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast, we're up around 80 today, and then it will be kind of slow to cool off tonight. 71 degrees at 8 o'clock. We're in the low 60s by midnight. Fog redevelops, and tomorrow morning could be pretty foggy to start. Then we'll have a front to watch uh, that'll move through and uh, we'll bring some gusty ones with it. We'll talk more about the timing on that for you here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. And now to Massachusetts and the disappearance of Anna Walsh, her husband, Brian, now behind bars and is charged with misleading investigators. As ABC's Morgan Norwood explains, this comes as they look into the circumstances surrounding her disappearance. The search into the disappearance of Massachusetts mom Anna Walsh entering its 10th day. Overnight, our ABC affiliate WCVB was there as police in hazmat suits combed through the trash at this trash transfer station. It comes just hours after Anna's husband, Brian, Bail was set at $500,000 cash. went before a judge. It's also when prosecutors revealed a grisly discovery. Crime scene services uh, recovered and found blood in the basement area. There was also a knife that was found. Anna is a 39 year old mother of three. She was last seen in the early hours on January 1st. She was supposed to catch a flight for work later that day. Prosecutors say Brian told police Anna took a ride chair to the airport at 6 a.m. But investigators believe she never took that ride and never boarded a flight. Brian Walsh was arrested over the weekend, charged with misleading the investigation. He's pleaded not guilty. Mr. Walsh has given several interviews. We have consented to searches of his home. Prosecutors say Brian's account of the day after Anna went missing simply doesn't add up. He allegedly told police he only left the house to take his son for ice cream, when authorities say they have proof he also went to Home Depot and bought about $450 in cleaning supplies. Typically, you arrest somebody on a lesser charge is to get them off the street. Then you start questioning them about what really happened to his wife. Brian Walsh's attorney argued that he has been incredibly cooperative with investigators. The couple has three young children between the ages of two and six. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. Hello everyone, these are your top headlines from Cheddar News. 
California, it's getting pummeled relentlessly by atmospheric river storms that's leading to evacuation and flooding. Torrential downpours from the state's fifth storm since Christmas on Monday has now raised the risk of flooding and landslides once again. 32,000 residents are under evacuation orders. This is officials prepare for nine more days of rain. Meanwhile, Instagram is ditching that shop button on the bottom navigation bar. They're now bringing the compose button back down to its center position. And the reels button had its prime real estate in the middle for a while, but that's now shifting one spot to the right. And a failed launch of one of Virgin Orbit's rockets is having a brutal impact on the company's stock. Virgin Orbit used to mo used a modified 747 to launch nine satellites into space from England with a rocket dropping from the plane and taking off mid-flight. The satellites were unable to reach orbit. And that's your Chatter News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. And more consumer news. Consumers borrowing at an even higher rate than predicted. Now Federal Reserve data shows consumer borrowing in November went up by almost $28 billion. That's less than the $29 billion increase in October, but it extends a historic stretch of reliance on debt during a year with soaring inflation. Economists were expecting a $25 billion monthly increase. Outstanding consumer credit, which is mostly credit cards, auto and student loans, grew at an annual rate of just over 7%. Revolving credit, which includes mostly credit cards, was up nearly 17%. And don't forget to buy a lottery ticket if you play. Tonight's drawing of the Mega Millions is now the third largest in the game's history. It's up to $1.1 billion or $568 million for the cash option. The jackpot has not been won since October. Mega Millions says this is the fourth time in four years. The top prize has exceeded a billion dollars. I'm not going to talk about it. Don't want to jinx it because last time I was. <laughs> it, win, I, so. I don't know. Maybe. It feels like we've been talking about lottery more in the last year, so I feel like this has happened more often. Yeah, I don't know. There's like, what, three or four? What did we just say? Or maybe we're all just thinking about it. I think we all just want to win the lottery. Big <laughs> jackpot. Yeah. yeah. It's been some big ones, though. Uh, 72 yeah. so far uh, today. 56 was the low this morning. Averages are 63 and 41, so we're already you know, above average. We'll be well above average this afternoon. Probably we won't get to the record of 86, but we'll be in range. That was set back in 1963. We've got some interesting mountain cedar numbers for you. We'll show you that coming up. Welcome back. I was just reading that it's 30 days away from the San Antonio Rodeo. And so oh, yeah, I can't wait for that. that. That means the weather's going to change. Yes. <laughs> it won't be like this. <laughs> just the rule, right? <laughs> Every year. Uh, keeps you on your toes. Yep. Uh, we know that much. I want to show you some astounding numbers, guys. Uh, uh -oh. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Can we sit down for these? You may want to. <laughs> has uh, been digging through these numbers and done some great research. She's got an article that's just about to be published on KSAT.com if you want to check it out. Uh, but it's, it's about mountain cedar, and we wanted to put it in historical perspective for you. So the average peak count is somewhere between 20,000 and 32,000 every year, meaning that's the highest number we get to. Usually sometime in January uh, is when we hit that number. The highest count on record, 1982. Great year, by the way. Wow. 80,000 uh, cubic wow. uh, grains per cubic meter. That was uh, the all time high. That's nothing we want to deal with. I can tell you that much. Uh, the highest we've seen in the last 15 years was back in 2011, where we got up to 48,000. This year has not been that bad. We've had a couple of higher counts where we've got up to around 12,000 or so, but nothing like that. And we're hoping that maybe this season won't be as bad. But if you want to read more about it, go check it out, ksat.com slash weather. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey's got a great article there for you to read. Let's go outside for you. Right now, we've got clear skies, temperatures 72 at the airport, 71 Stinson, 73 Kelly, 72 at Randolph. We're looking at a west southwesterly wind. That's always going to warm us up. And so we know temperatures will be pretty toasty this afternoon. They're already getting into that range. 75 in New Braunfels, 75 in Rock Springs. You're at 76 in Kerrville. The numbers are a little cooler. Gonzales over to Pleasanton because clouds held on a little bit longer there. But those are quickly dissipating. Low 70s here around San Antonio right now. It is beautiful for the lunch hour. Uh, we make it up to about 79, 3 o'clock, 80 by 4 p.m. And then look for temperatures to start to dip back down into the 70s by the evening hours, eventually 60s. And notice we're adding some clouds here by midnight. After midnight is when 
cloud cover and fog begins to kick in. It's going to be another one of those mornings where fog is going to be quite thick. I think this is the future cast with fog in mind. Nothing at midnight, but by six, seven o'clock fog begins to settle in and I think it could be fairly dense here around San Antonio. So that could affect the morning commute by nine, 10 o'clock starting to get a little bit better. But that fog could hold on till about 10 a.m. before eventually burning off. There's the satellite picture of those clouds that were holding on a little bit earlier around Carn City, Forestville, Three Rivers and Nixon uh, quickly dissipating here. And so we'll get full sun there as well. As uh, we look out west, we've been noting the uh, very heavy rain around California area of low pressure right here. There's going to be more flooding and the snow that has been coming down in this year. Nevada's here just incredible and it's bad. It's a bad situation, but there's so much snow there. It will help with the drought situation once all that melts. Uh, you know, it's been such a, a drought stricken time out west that this is actually going to really help down the line. It's just right now there is uh, quite a bit of flooding. Our next cold front, which is associated with that system you see out, out over California, moves to the middle part of the country and drives the front through our area. We have it timed out for Thursday morning, but this is pre dawn. So really it's Wednesday night, early, early Thursday. We think between midnight and 2 a.m. it's moving through the hill country. It'll be through San Antonio between 2 and 4 a.m. Thursday morning, not tomorrow morning, but Thursday morning and then through our southern portion of every area between 4 and 6 a.m. Cooler, drier weather comes in with this. We're also going to see some gusty winds gusting to 35 Thursday morning, but no rain. That's the unfortunate part about all this. We uh, need the rain. We're in a serious drought situation ourselves, uh, but it's just not in the cards. 80 to, uh, today, 81 tomorrow, 53 Thursday morning as the front comes through, turning windy, gusts to 35 Thursday morning, 68 for high. And then notice the morning lows Friday and Saturday. It's not bitterly cold, but those mornings will be chilly. 38 both mornings, 66 Friday, 68 Saturday. Weekend looks pretty good. More moisture, more clouds by Sunday, and some pretty nice weather as we get into next week for MLK Day 76 on Monday. We'll be right back. Welcome back. All right, let's take you downtown, get you right to Mike and Fiona, because you know they've got some excitement. But yes, we food. do. We do. And you know, it's, it's always nice during the week maybe to find a little quiet time to maybe relax, right? And maybe reconnect. Yeah, and you always want to find something special, not just the ordinary plate. Wow. Whoa. Ask him we should white, white tablecloths. Table Cesar Martinez, what's going on here? Well, we're recreating uh, Friday, uh, Thursday nights at Mi Familia, our piano nights uh, with Gerardo Flores. Uh, enjoy some great drinks, great food, and great ambiance, and great music. Uh, instant date night. Yes, I love this. He's going to whip up a couple of nice cocktails for us. We'll tell you all about that as well. Speaking of romantic, Jen's got a nice uh, romantic spot just in time for Valentine's Day because that's right around the corner. And a local book author is going to be sharing the adventures of his daughters. These yes, are it, great children's books. Yeah, and, and he's also become a publisher, so he publishes his own books there. Former Army Ranger as well, so he's got some stories about that. Mm -hmm. And speaking of great music, we have got a local musician here. He is going, he's got, writes his own music and he's going to be playing a couple of selections for us right now, some acoustic music. And he is also in a Rush tribute band. And you're going to want to see the latest KSAT Insider Deals. We'll have that for you too. What do we have here? This looks very good. I think I'm going to have to have a little sample here just because it's sitting in front of my face. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live. On oh. 